Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, All in Crypto here and welcome back guys for what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. If you are new around here and finding yourself on my videos for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one around 1pm 1 UK time every single day to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening in the crypto space but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We are going to be setting you guys up for next week. We're going to be taking a look at economic data that is coming out. We're also going to be taking a look at how actually next week could be quite positive and the smaller time frame pattern that Bitcoin is in could be pointing towards this. We're also going to be taking a look at some of JP Morgan's recent comments talking about Bitcoin going back down to 42,000 pre-halvening. And we're going to be looking at these comments and looking at how prior or what Bitcoin's price has done prior going into a halving, being this many days out going into a halving. And Bitcoin is at resistance right now, or what you should expect at resistance coming up against all-time high resistance. So actually a pullback we wouldn't be against at all, but it may want to deviate above the highs, put in a new all-time high before it does that. So we're not calling for a pullback. This is a bull market, but we will be looking at JP Morgan's comments. We'll be looking at where Bitcoin's currently at. To start the video off though, however, before we get into all that, I just want to talk about the macro game, the macro financial game that you are either willingly or unwillingly a part of. Um, and I think most of us are unwillingly a part of the fiat systems. We have no other choice. It's all we know. And actually Bitcoin for me, even though we clown the Bitcoin maxis is very special because it unlocked this kind of paradigm shift for me that actually why are we using the fiat systems and why isn't there an alternative and bitcoin has came about at literally the perfect time in fact for me it's too good to be true um i ultimately think that perhaps the same people who throughout history have always tink have always tinkered with money are perhaps doing the same thing with um, bitcoin but that's just my own personal opinion and that actually it's not this kind of uh, miraculous you know, completely um, honorable figure, Satoshi. Um, I actually think that there's potentially more nefarious uh, intent behind it. And I can actually see similarities to between what happened in 1907, which led to the Federal Reserve Act. First of all, the Aldrich Bill, which of course didn't get through. And then they basically just went to the opposition and got it through the, the, the um, other way with potentially the uh, 2008 financial crisis, uh, Bitcoin, and now we are legitimately looking at an entirely uh, an entire monetary shift, an entire monetary restructuring, um, given the colossal debt burden. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to be starting off by looking at this article over here. Now, this is from CNBC. The cat is out of the bag. The genie is out of the bottle, guys. The US national debt is rising by $1 trillion about every 100 days. Now, the bailouts that took place in 2008 were to the tunes of hundreds of billions. We now live in a world without a banking crisis. And I know there'll be some angry guy in the comment that's hell bent on the fact that we are in a banking crisis and the markets are wrong and they shouldn't have gone up because they've been bearish and not made any money. Well, that's your own problem. We're not here to um, uh, talk about that. Um, but what we are here to do is, is really highlight the great scam that is befallen you. Uh, and this, is, this channel um, was born out of a, a need and a desire to help people financially because I do believe that finances directly correlated with freedom and the quality of life that you may have and if you understand the game that you're playing and the rules of it and the ponzi-esque nature of it you're going to do far better than somebody who's just going about you know oblivious ignorance is bliss um, and doesn't understand the great game that's been playing against you and the reason the rich get richer and the poor get poorer is because the rich own assets which are pegged against the monetary system that is inflating just by u.s national debt and there's other uh, vessels or facets that, that, that money comes into existence, but just by debt, by $1 trillion. Meanwhile, your wage hasn't gone up to the same degree. Um, the only thing that perhaps will do is your assets. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this kind of backs and is the backing that we have, or one of the backings that we have for having got long back into uh, the markets at the start of 2023, because we understand the great game and the point at where it's at we're at this velocity point, and this is why we're bullish on the S&P. This is why we're bullish on gold. And this is why we're bullish on crypto, which is in, a, or certainly Bitcoin and crypto more broadly, which is in an uptrend against Bitcoin, uh, sorry, against um, the S&P and gold. So this is the great game that's being played on you. Uh, the national debt now stands at $3.4 trillion as of Wednesday. Since June, the last two 
uh, one trillion jumps occurred in about 100 days. This is insane. This is the US uh, monetary supply over here on the chart. And this is uh, Bitcoin in Bitcoin baby blue. That should be Bitcoin orange. Uh, gold in a nice yellow color and the spy in purple. And this is the great gain. Housing goes in a similar fashion. You know, this is why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And to understand this, this is just the money supply. There's, there's way more metrics that we can look at. You know, for example, if we want to look at a source of liquidity that most people don't look at, um, I can show you this in the form of various facets of the US government, like the reserve uh, repo, um, you know, and you can see the correlation between markets and markets literally bottomed around the time of this and it's going higher. This is going to accelerate and this is why we're long everything. You know, Bitcoin on its own technical merit looks great. It looks even um, or it looks pretty much the exact same against the likes of the SPY, the NASDAQ and gold. And bearing in mind, we are bullish on these markets. So the SPY actually made our target that we had for it. NASDAQ did ages ago. You know, we now have a, a higher target for Amazon, although everyone said, no, you're wrong. You can't possibly be talking about Amazon going to $263 when Jeff Bezos is selling his stock. And we're saying we go by the charts, not your news, emotionally driven uh, headlines that they give to the masses, the sheep, um, so that the insiders can, um, you know, take the opposite side of that and, and engineer an event to get you guys um on the wrong side of things. That's why we honestly believe people should subscribe to this channel because we believe the, the, the charts are the footprints in the sands. It's what we preach uh, and we do very well as a result of it. So this is the great game. Be on the right side of it. There is gonna be an entire collapse of this game. It's, it's gonna essentially stop at some point. And I think that will happen just in time for CBDCs and all these other things. And they've got you all used to this idea of, 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 of crypto. Um, by that time and, and you know you can see the new financial system being built as we speak um, again bitcoin's creation in 2008 it's just too good to be true when the the monetary system that we have and if you look at how accurate it's, it's almost like bitcoin knew the future uh, satoshi definitely let's say we take the narrative as gospel understood the game really better than anyone if you look at what's happened with likes of the money supply and, and how well, you know, Bitcoin was created to address that issue. Um, it really is divine and it's, it's, it's a blessing to be a part of this space. Let's talk about Bitcoin where it's currently at. Then we're going to look at the dollar. On top of all the printing, remember, we have a bearish macro view on the dollar. So our derived view on the market comes from taking a 360 look at everything saying, okay, this is going this way, this is going that way. What does that mean for this? What does that mean for that? And if you look at this is our view for the dollar. We think you've been in this broad channel since 2008. You're going to come to the lower band of it before you then find your strength. This strength is going to likely be in the form of the dollar milkshake theory and whatever the yield curve is predicting. Um, but with the week we've got ahead, I could see this. I think this is now on the way down. We did have a little bit of stronger dollar than we expected. We did have a head and shoulders target that got hit. Perfect run. Goes on and puts in a slight high and then comes down. I think this is going to continue to come down and ultimately fulfill the broader path that we had ahead of it. Of course, we know the correlation between dollar up, risk generally down. There are uh, anomalies in that. Um, but if we dive back over to Bitcoin and we take a look at where it's at on the smaller time frames, I actually think this could be a positive week for Bitcoin. And the thing is, when you get chart action like this, all of retail, all of crypto YouTube start coming out and saying, oh, well, it can't possibly go high. You're going to end up like Gareth Soloway, not to pick on him at this point, that's been trying to short this the entire time and is still trying to do so today. Eventually, if you bet on something 10 times, you're likely going to get, even if you're wrong the nine, you could get it right the one. Um, the, when you have this kind of price, people very much expect to pull back. You are coming at a resistance, so it's natural to expect that. But in the short term, I actually think this week you're going to squeeze higher just based on where Bitcoin's at. See how you're squeezing up here? You've fallen kind of out of what was a short-term trend line, but this will likely, in my opinion, pop to the upside and maybe look to run to the sort of 66, 67K range before you then have a pullback. Um, and perhaps JP Morgan and what they're saying before we go to look at the week ahead might not be that far from the truth, but don't take what JP Morgan say as gospel. So JP Morgan says Bitcoin price could drop towards 42,000 after April halving. So this is expecting this to happen after the halvening. Let's take a look at our Bitcoin four-year cycle theory chart. 
you typically, let's go down the smaller time frames and go back in history, because that's what this would be based on. Halvening down in, for the last one. Remember, we've got the halvening fastly approaching. This might be the first time in history, though, however, which could throw out looking at historic cycles. It's like Plan B's made a resurgence all of a sudden. I mean, damn. <laughs> Tell me we aren't in a bull market and you see meme coins and all this other stuff going well. But typically, Bitcoin does rest or go sideways after the halvening could be a similar thing but ultimately just like with the etfs you then have this thing set in motion where there's a supply and demand real shift and reversion that's ultimately gonna um, set it up for basic supply and demand um more upside so we'll see we'll address it when it comes on the short term though we're long we're, we well, i'm not long bitcoin actually closed a leverage trade uh today just because i don't want to eat the sunday volatility um, but I don't think people should be trading. I think they should be investing, getting on the side of the trend, which is what we try and help you do on this channel. Let's talk about the week ahead before I love and leave you. Tomorrow, we've got nothing. Uh, Tuesday, we've got US ISMs. Wednesday, we've got the likes of uh, the Bank of Canada's rate decision. We've got FOMC members speaking. Um, we've got US ADPs. I used to think ADPs were a good barometer for what was going to happen in the non-farm, but in this environment, you know, it's just not been, you know, sometimes ADPs have come right down and non-farms gone through the roof. Uh, we've also got US non-farms. So I'm expecting, the beats on this have been huge. I would expect a slightly lower one, but I say that I've been wrong pretty much every time I've said that. You've also got ECB rate decisions expected to remain. US jobless claims, really Thursday and Friday are going to be the big ones, ultimately going to weigh on the dollar, which is going to weigh on risk. Guys, that's really all I've got for you. So the great game of impoverishment is what we're going to call it for you guys the masses is one where they proliferate the money supply without compensating you for it whilst taxing you un uh reasonably or un what would the what would the word be here un there's no reason for them to be taxing you because it, it, like, like they've just up tax in the UK. They've just up council tax in the UK, right? By the highest amount that they possibly could. There is zero correlation in recent years between higher taxes and a better standard of living and better services in the UK. I'm talking about. Maybe you can find some pariahs abroad, um, somewhere like Iceland, perhaps might be an okay case study. But there could be a lot of other reasons involved in that. Um, and, and certainly council taxes. There's zero. If you look at con um, counties and, and cities in the UK. Look at them. The increases in council tax haven't done anything. Um, so it, the, the great game is a proliferation one. We looked at that. Now it's getting to this velocity point of view. It's why owning assets, it's why assets have gone up over time, quite simply. Uh, it's why they're going to continue to go up. This is a macro environment that we think we're in right now. There's going to be a crash of this, but we don't think it comes later. This is where we fundamentally disagreed on the bears, even though we think they've had some great points on the timing of things. That's going to come. Hopefully by that time, we've all made a load of money in crypto and we can get out of the markets. Um, we'll see what happens post halvening We'll address that when we get closer to it and when we see what Bitcoin's doing. I think you may be looking at all-time highs. Maybe not pre, but certainly certainly this year. You know, we've got a technical target for Bitcoin. to go to 150k in the short term. It looks like it might want to do a little pop. Dollar, we'll see what happens this week. And yeah, that's really all I've got for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next.